Leviticus 19, 1 through 2, 15 through 18. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice, you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am am the Lord. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to this time of celebration, this time to worship and praise the God of love. Come today, know that love, find that God, and know you are welcome. Please join me in the hymn, I Woke Up This Morning. My friends, we have come together today and been welcomed. Let us now join our voices together as we are called to worship. What have you come for today? We have come to be known by the love of our God. What is your heart's desire in being known by God's love? As we are known by God's love, we desire to continue to grow our connection with God to let our faith be shown in the living of our lives and to cultivate hope in our world. Come then and worship our God that together we could become stronger in all these ways. In the name of God, let it be so. Now that we have been called into worship, we have been welcomed and sung together, let us join in invoking the name of God our God is never far from us, never more than a prayer away. Let us pray and invoke the Spirit of God in our worship. Holy God, we come listening for your teachings. Speak your truth and wisdom into our lives. We come to remember the journeys of our ancestors who taught us your ways. Be with us as we live with such faith. We come to be refreshed and renewed that our actions would shine with your love, making it known to the world. Shine in and through us. We come to find your call for our lives so we might know where it is your hope is needed in the world. Use us as implements to cultivate your hope throughout the world. Amen. Let us join together now in the Apostles' Creed, saying what it is we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge again the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in the hymn, More Love to You, O Christ. Lois Hall. Um, she's what, 100 years old or 101 now? And uh, she, she is here every Sunday. And uh, Fred Kubiker was the same, you know? And, and poor Fred could hardly walk, but he came to church and uh, he was here um, religiously and so was Lois. And uh, when other people struggle to wonder why they come to church, or, or just, you know, it's like, oh, I, I don't feel like getting out of bed and going to church, but by gosh, Lois and Fred did. So if, if they can do it when they're 101, and I think Fred was, what, 95, 96, then why can't I? Um, I, I guess I... I like to think I lead by example um, and, and hope that what I, what I do and the way I conduct myself in the church and, and, and uh, would inspire others to do so as well. And I hope when I'm 100 years old that I'll be able to still come to church. Our epistle reading this morning comes from the book of First Thessalonians, the second chapter, verses 1 through 8. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had the courage in our God to, to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. 
for our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext of, for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children, so deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Here ends our first reading. As we continue our journey looking at what stewardship truly means, I'll remind you again of the mission we have here at Roberts Congregational United Church of Christ. Because our mission is to connect with God as we live by faith, are known by love, and cultivate hope. So today, today we talk about that third section, to be known by love. And what does that mean? As we listen to Paul today, he's going from area to area. And as they get to one town, they may or may not be welcome. In fact, many times he was not. And he had just come from Philippi where he had been mistreated, he had been put in prison, they had been flogged. The people didn't bring him in lovingly. And yet he shared the message. Him and his fellow workers went and shared God's message kindly, gently, and now they're moving on to Thessalonica. And they get there, and they start this church. And Paul's now writing to them, talking to them about having shared this gospel with them, not because they were compelled or to receive praise from the world, but because they loved God, and they truly loved God these people. They wanted them to have the best of what God could give. They wanted them to see the truth of how God's love sprung up and worked in and through them. How God was there each step of the way. So if you look at our journey so far, we've talked about connecting with God. We have talked about having that faith that is lived out, which Paul is doing. And now Paul is teaching us about that love that comes from God and we are called to share. That love that builds with inside of us that we are called to give back to the world. A love without conditions. A love that doesn't seek mortal praise. A love that doesn't follow all the rules sometimes but instead a love that is given out to anyone who is in need and anyone who comes with hope of finding God. So what does it look like to share that? To be able to look out on the world and see our neighbors not as people that are allies or enemies, but instead to see them as God does, created, loved beings. That in and of itself is the trick and the part that begins to make the stewardship truly work. Because remember, the gifts we've received, we did nothing for. And we start to see that through our connection with God. We start to see the gifts we've been given. And then as we start to see them, we begin to live out in faith that God has put so much faith in us as to continue to give us these gifts unconditionally and expects that we will use them unconditionally. 
So we step into this role of love. Love of neighbor, love of self. Sharing ourselves. It's the ultimate sacrifice because we may not see anything in return for it. Think about that for a second. We may not see it, and yet it happens. Many times we share that love and we send that love back out into the world and never get to see the end results. We don't get to see what God does as God molds because someone else is connected due to the love we've shared, that self that we've given. the gifts we give back. So whether it's through our time or through our money, we give back to God by giving to others. And that gift then can be used, molded, grown by God. But first we have to share of the most intimate thing we have, ourselves. And that's not an easy thing to do because if I open up, you may or may not accept me. Why is it so many people have a hard time coming forward and asking for help? Because they may be rejected. And for too long, people have felt that God's church God's people judge them because the world judges them, because we need to be sharing that gospel, sharing that love in how we live out our faith as we are connected to God. Do you see how the steps begin to work? We connect, we see the gifts, we begin to live out our faith based on the hope that we've been given. And then, that love goes out, it begins to heal, begins to change the world, even if it's one life at a time. And very, very rarely do we get to see those results in individuals because God takes them and sends them back out into the world through the people they have placed in their paths as they begin to make that connection, find that faith, and live it out and allow that love to be brought back to somebody else. Stewardship is not simply about giving money or giving time, but of doing it from the heart and finding where God is within us and sharing that, that part that makes us feel truly whole. Now, it may come in the form of money. It may come in the form of gifts or of time or of sharing a talent or simply in sharing our story with one another. But it's that sharing of love that lets us move forward with God's plan. That stewardship of love that helps the world to be able to see God within us, to help them to know they can turn here to God's family and find love without judgment and without condition. For that is the way God gives to us. Our God opens our hearts through the gifts we've been given to share. Opens our hearts by becoming intimately known to us through our connection with God. And as we share self, 
as we share our stories, we find God at work, not only in us, but in others. So to give you an example of how that happens, a few years back, when I was at a church where I enjoyed being able to help some folks due to the graciousness of one of the parishioners that had been there for years, but no longer attended at that church. He was a pilot. He was gone 99% of the time. No longer actually even lived in that town. But every year, came and gave a gift and ask that it be used. Every year around Christmas, he came back to give back to God for all that God had done in his world. Now, I don't know what his story was. If he was giving simply because he had now and felt that he needed to give, I don't know how God moved through his life. But I know God did. And he would give that gift. But he never found out how that gift actually worked. What it had actually done. So he would give his gift. And the year that I remember, he comes in and he gives me this check. And says, use it for someone who has a true need. And it just so happened that the very next day, I had a young woman come in who was trying to figure out how to do everything she needed to do. She was a single mom who was trying to keep her apartment, trying to get her GED, and was told by the local community college that if she got her GED, she was guaranteed a spot in their nurse's aid program. So she went and she came to us. She needed some things in order to make that happen. And the first thing she needed was help with her rent. But there was also a fee for the GED that she didn't have. And I had this gift that he had given me. So I helped her. I gave her what she needed yet for her rent, the part that she needed. And we paid for the fee for the GED. And there was enough left over where I was able to help her out with getting some small gifts for the kids for Christmas. And I helped her. Gave her that, and I never saw her again. A couple years later, as I was getting my mail, there's this small envelope that comes. Inside of it was a small book that says Prayers for Pastors. And in it was a letter and this woman had tracked me down. And she writes in there everything that had happened. How that gift had gotten her started in this program, and she had gotten her GED. She had gotten her nurse's aides certificate. She got a full-time job in Omaha at a hospital. Her children were now graduating from high school. One was on his way to college, and she had one that was graduating, another one that was coming up right behind. But life had turned around from this small gift because this individual shared and gave without knowing where the gift would go or what it would do or even ever finding out what the results were, how that gift had changed a life. And yet it moved in beautiful and wonderful ways. And she was so grateful that she sought me out. She searched. I was a, in a whole new church by this point. I was eight and a half hours away from where I had served the last time. And now I get this book. Just a small gift to remind me of what God is doing in the world 
And that happens as well when we share of self. So know that when you share, God works. That love will always come back in some form or fashion. You may never hear the rest of the story. You may never get to see where that has happened or what the outcome was. I can't tell you how many times I've helped people through the generosity of all of you where I don't know what the end result is. But I have faith that God is working and connecting through the love that others have shared and that I'm allowed to share through this job like that. So I encourage you, begin to share of self and know that God is at work as we connect, as we live out our faith, and we are known by love. God works miracles. Now each of us have been given graciously by our God. Each of us have been shown wonderful love and gifts. And now in this time of offering of praise and thanksgiving, I would ask that each of us take time to remember those gifts and give thanks. For our God is always generous, providing in an abundance of things which we truly need. Part of the call for our earthly lives is to take the time to be known by love through that generous God who has graciously blessed us with each moment and breath. In these moments of silence coming up, take count of those blessed moments and give thanks for them. Then make your pledge to God in how you are going to improve your conscious contact with God, how you will let God work in and through you so God's love might be known to the world today, tomorrow, and in the years to come. Please join me in these moments of silence. Friends, as we have made our vows, as we have given thanks and praise to God, individually, let us now come together as God's body, as God's family, and pray with one another. Holy Creator, from the time we rise until we lay down to rest, you work right beside us, in us, and through us. When we sleep, you watch over us, protecting us from things which we are completely ignorant of. We give you thanks and praise from the smallest of blessings to the greatest of your deeds in our lives. There is no one else like you. May your name be blessed forever. Amen. Let us now join in our hymn, O God, our help in ages past.
purpose for being here is to make a difference, to whether it's to help someone who doesn't yet know what being part of a church is like, or to help those, you know, the kiddos that are coming up and growing into their own faith. I think that my purpose for being here is simply to, you know, be a guide for those who are still learning. Um, I come to church, honestly, because I started coming when I was really little. My parents brought me, and I continue coming because I love the family that's here. Um, not just my own biological family, but also the family that I've developed through the church. Uh, and I just really do enjoy the community and the fellowship that we have here. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verses 34 through 40. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked Jesus this question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Here ends the reading of God's word. May it have rich blessings on your lives. As we continue with this message of sharing God's love, we begin to see how important that is, not only for others, but for us. As Jesus shares these two great commandments, the first is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And asks us to place God first. Now think about this. We've walked through this together, right? What's the first step to the stewardship process? Connecting with God. Building that intimate relationship. And Jesus places that right here. Which creates that faith. Gives us reason to trust and believe because God trusts and believes in us. And then Jesus moves into loving your neighbor. And we've talked about that. How the sharing of self becomes so important in letting God's love be known to the world. 
in letting it heal and bring the world closer to God, one individual at a time. And then Jesus tacks on the peace as yourself. And there I call you today. God's love means loving yourself as well. And there we hurt many times. We have a hard time loving self because we know what we've done. We know what times we've turned away when we've let things go that we shouldn't have. When we've simply stood back and allowed things to happen that we shouldn't have. When we have out and out defied God through our actions. And when we've looked in the mirror and not seen ourselves as God sees us. Now, remember the steps again. First, making that connection. And in that, we have to stop for a second and see how much value God puts on each of us. Regardless of what you have done, God is there calling you, equipping you, blessing you. God finds value in you and wants that love that God is sharing to grow within you. Not for you to be arrogant. It's not about finding yourself better than everybody else. But instead, to truly see yourself as God sees you, as a work in progress, as something that has great value. And yet, how do we often see ourselves? We hear the world, and the world tells us that our faith isn't strong enough. Because when we sit down to pray, we struggle. I know that struggle. I sit down to do my morning prayers, and as I'm doing them, everything from the day starts to come in. I got to get this done. I got to get that done. Oh, and there's this. And my prayer stops for a moment. And I get distracted. But I come back. And I begin praying again. When I do my studies, I always have to fight with myself not to sit down and think, Boy, I really wish so-and-so would read this because I've been hurt by somebody. Or I don't have to sit back and worry about the fact that my mind drifts off to the list of things to do as I'm reading through trying to find God's message for me. But instead, to be able to take the Scripture, to discipline myself to struggle through those things and to find God present where God is calling me through that particular piece of Scripture. What God is trying to show me as I hold the Bible up as a mirror so I can measure myself and see where my shortcomings are, where my growing edges are, and also see where God has worked wonderful miracles within me, where God has changed and transformed things, where God has placed people in my world to help grow my faith while I'm connecting. To strengthen me so I can live that out. To give me moments that allow me to see God at work and bless me as I see that love, not only in others, but within me. It is oh so important that we find those moments and we see ourselves as God sees us. Because what message do we put out as we are living our faith out if we can't see any possibility for that to change and transform us? If we can't see where God has changed and transformed our life? If we can't see where God's love is in us, not just a 
vessel to hold it in, that we can hand the vessel over to somebody else. But God's love is living within us so that we can have love of self. We will never be perfect in this life. We are always going to make mistakes. The trick is to get back up, remeasure, repent, move back onto the right track, and get back to where God is calling us. To re-aim ourselves for where God is asking us to go. It is so important. Because if we can't forgive ourselves, even though God has forgiven us, then that message comes through. We weren't worthy of God's forgiveness, but we've received it. We haven't been worthy of a lot of God's love, but we have received it. And if we've received it and we've accepted it, God can begin to show the world how that works in and through us as we share it with others. So stewardship isn't just about giving to everyone else, but also taking a step back and seeing where we have been blessed because God has chosen to love us. Even with our flaws, with the ways in which we don't always do it right, even with our shortcomings and our growing edges, but that's just what they are, growing edges. They are places we can work on. God sees beyond that edge to the beauty that God created within us, to the things God has given us. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And how do I begin to love my neighbor if I can't love me? Because when I get into that thinking, if I'm not worthy and I look on my neighbor, do I view my neighbor as being more worthy than me? Maybe, but quite often what we do is begin to compare, right? Well, at least I'm not like this one is, or at least I don't do that. They have their growing edges too. And it's hard for me to see God's love and gifts in them if I can't see them at work in me. So to forgive ourselves and to see ourselves as God's created beings is so important. That's where the healing begins that allows God to work in and through us. Think about Paul for a second. Or for that matter, any of the other people whom God has called. Whether you're talking about Moses, who was a murderer and a liar, Abraham, David, Paul, Peter. Peter denied Christ. And Scripture clearly tells us, if you deny me, I will deny you to my Father. And yet God forgives Peter and calls Peter to this ministry. Paul murdered Christians over and over again and becomes the foundation of the wider church, starting churches across Asia Minor, teaching them about the love of Christ, whom he never met face to face in the earthly flesh. But God moved in and through him. David, the king who was a person after God's own heart, murdered, was an adulterer, taunted Saul and tortured him day after day. And yet God calls him to unite God's people. And he does it because God works in and through him and because he learned 
come back time and time again and repent. He was a person after God's own heart because he was able to see where he had messed up, come in and pray for forgiveness, accept God's forgiveness, and move ahead as God called him to new things. So in our stewardship, we also need to do that, to love self enough to see God at work in and through us. A beautiful act that God does for us as we connect, as we begin to see and trust what God is doing, then we are able to begin to live in that faith that we can trust. And if we can trust, then God's forgiveness means something. And God's love and God's gifts mean something. And that call has a purpose for our lives. In a world that tells us we are worthless, that we have no place, that we will never be good enough, God calls us and says, not only are you good enough, but I will use you to make the world better. As we look at that in real life terms, think about those people who have helped heal your life. Those people who have inspired you because they have come from meager means, from horrible places, and their stories of how they were in this low of low places. They were the dredges of the world. And God raised them up and forgave them And look at what they're doing now. And it inspires you. That is where God works, not only in others, but in your world. So the stewardship of loving others also means we need to love ourselves, to care for ourselves the way we would for others. To use the gifts that God gives to meet our needs, and then take that part that is there and before we start to touch our wants, to begin to give back to the world through our time, our talents, through our sharing of story and love, through allowing people to see where God has moved in and through us so we may be known by the love God. Our mission is to connect with God as we live by faith, are known by love, and as we will find out next week, cultivate hope. May God bless you all with enough sight to see where God is working in your world that you may love yourself and therefore reach out and love your neighbor. And as we come together as a group, as we give those gifts, that we would all be known by love. God's blessings on you all and all God's people said, Amen. As we have heard God's word, as we have come together today, as we have prayed and listened for God's message for our lives. Let us now join together with our brothers and sisters around the world during this time, saying the words Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I come to church 
because I really um, enjoy the family atmosphere and because it's a, a good way for me to start my week connecting with God. <laughs> I serve um, in the church because I actually have a lot of fun doing it. I love being on the deacons. Um, and I enjoy the camaraderie and fellowship time that I get um, being with the people on the various boards. Um, and I've just always kind of had a leadership type personality, so it fits very well for me. <laughs> Well, I would have to say my purpose is to be a servant and to love those around me, just to, to make people feel welcome and um, respected and honored, I guess. My friends, I'm glad you were able to be here today. I'm glad that you were able to come and share in these moments of love. Now as you go out into the world and as we end our time here together, may God bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in peace, my friends, and join me in our hymn, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian. <laughs>
As always, my friends, I'm glad you were able to come and join us. And I hope that you find some inspiration of God through our time of worship together. Now I ask you for your help. I ask you to continue to pray for the ministries we do here at Roberts Congregational United Church of Christ. That you continue to pray for those around you as they reach out in God's love and hold one another up. We also ask that if you're able and willing, that in a few moments you hit the Donate Now button and help to continue the ministries we do here at the church. Help us to reach out in God's love as you give your gifts of stewardship and as you reach out to others. Because each gift we receive each piece that we get helps us to reach out in that love in larger and larger ways. May you have a blessed week.